Cesare, the conductor, has been hurt. A big hand came down to uncouple the boxcar from the sky. See what happened. Welcome back, everybody. I don't know about you, but I dread sticking my hands inside the train layout because I'm always fearful that I'm going to knock something over or break something. One of the best opportunities to break something is when you're trying to uncouple your train. Well, one way you could solve that is to have magnetic uncoupling, but that requires putting a magnet underneath your track. What happens if the magnet is not exactly where you want it, or like in my case, you already put pristine cobblestones down and don't want to tear it up and to put a magnet underneath. So the next thing, next option you have is of course to reach in, touch your engine and lift it away from the boxcar. Well, if you haven't knocked anything over, of course, then now you've got your fingerprints all over your model. The next option is to get some kind of uh, bamboo skewer to try to pry the two um, knuckles apart and then push it apart. Well, of course, if you are lucky, you haven't knocked anything down, but if you're like me, you have probably knocked down a bunch of details or you have knocked down and killed one of your model figures. So I was looking for a better solution to avoid having to reach in and avoid knocking things over. So follow me and see how I did it. <coughs> I searched the internet for possible solution. What I was looking for was something that would allow me to remotely control the coupler. And I hit upon the idea of, well, how about DCC controlling uh, the coupler? And I found this uh, kit made by Pressy Models out of Switzerland that does the trick. It is a small half inch or six millimeter long motor that sits behind a coupler pocket and pulls the knuckle open. It took about two weeks to arrive from Switzerland to here in the United States. And the package includes two small motors, a shrink tubing for your electrical connections because you need to connect it to your DCC decoder, two resistors, along with the parts to control the coupler came the instructions. The instructions are pretty short. It tells you how to install it. It tells you how to wire it and how to possibly program it. Programming will de really depend on the kind of decoder that you are going to be using. Here's a drawing of the basic concept. It, the motor sits behind the coupler box and then pulls the knuckle open. The kit is designed for HO scale and I model GN15. As you can see, there's plenty of room for the motor. Here I'm test fitting it to see how it will sit. And here I'm carving out some channels for the wires to run in back into the model. Once the motor is in place, I will glue the wires into the channels that I have carved so that it sits uh, out of sight when it's on the track. I wanted the motor to sit level with the coupler box, so I used some two millimeter thick plastic to make spacers to put underneath the motor before gluing it. I used plastic cement to glue the plastic spacer onto the, uh, the bottom of the engine, which is also made out of plastic. 
tweezers came in handy. The next step was to use epoxy to glue the small motor to the spacers. It's important to position the motor to be straight and perpendicular to the coupler. That way the operation will be as smooth as possible. Here I am routing the wire and feeding them into the engine compartment of the locomotive. A word of warning, be gentle when you're doing the wiring because you can easily disconnect some of your old work, like I did. If you're all thumbs like me, the next step is going to be difficult, which is uh, tying the little thread into a little bow like this to then hook it over the knuckle and tighten it to make a nice little loop. To be honest, it's actually a lot easier than it looks. The next step is to put a dot of glue so that the thread doesn't come undone. At this stage, I was feeling more and more confident because it was getting to feel like I could actually do this. Next, I drilled a small tiny hole to run the thread from the knuckle to the small motor. Drill a hole that is a little bigger than the thread so the thread can move in the hole smoothly. I did it too tight and it bunched up on me, so it was a little bit of a struggle. Here I'm pulling it out, pulling the thread through the hole with a pair of tweezers. Position the coupler away from the motor like I have it positioned here in the video. Tie a loop around the spindle of the motor. I applied a little bit of super glue to the knot on the spindle. There is a black wire and a red wire on the motor. I wired the black wire to the blue neutral on the decoder and the red wire to a green white wire from the decoder. I also made sure that I soldered the supplied resistor to the red wire. After wiring, the coupler is ready to use. I took it a step further by prog programming the coupler sound effect to sound when the button is pressed to activate the motor. I will provide a link to my blog describing the steps to program a Soundtrack Tsunami 2. And now, watch the coupler in action. Once again, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. In a very short time, we have reached over 100 subscribers. We appreciate it so much.